Dr. Party, I'd like to thank you for consenting to this interview. It is my pleasure to be here. Okay. Dr. Party, you recently gave a talk at South Bay IANS, uh, your account of your own near-death experience, and I'm wondering if you could talk to us about it now. Yeah, my near-death experience happened about three years ago. It was an experience which changed my life forever in multiple ways. I became a happier, healthier, and a more peaceful person. It started with prostate cancer surgery about five years ago, and after that I had complications from prostate cancer surgery. And the biggest complication which I had to manage every day was incontinence. And two years after the original surgery, it was not getting better. So a doctor at UCLA Medical Center decided to put an artificial sphincter and a device inside me so I could control my bladder function. And that was originally done on the 14th of December 2010. The surgery went fine, but two, three days after the surgery, I started having very high fever, redness, swelling. I could not go to the bathroom at all. I was becoming very septic. Originally, the doctors tried IV antibiotics, but they were of no use because I was getting severely, severely infected. So my wife had to rush me to UCLA hospital on Christmas Eve. And then they had to rush me to the emergency surgery to take the device out because it had become the source of infection. So when general anesthesia was induced, about 10 to 15 minutes later after the uh, general anesthesia was induced, I saw myself floating about 10 to 12 feet above uh, the operating table on the left side. And me being an anesthesiologist, my first reaction was, how is this possible? Did somebody put any LSD in my anesthesia? Or somebody used an anesthetic drug known as ketamine, which is a dissociative anesthesia and has LSD kind of reaction. But that was not the case. And my first reaction as a out of body experience was that I was not only present in the operating room, but I could also sense and see my mother and my sister in India. They were sitting in the lounge there and it was evening time there and they were having general discussion. My mom was wearing a green sari and a green sweater and my sister was wearing a blue jean and a red sweater, which after two, three days of me getting better, I called and verified it. And in the operating room, I saw myself being cut and the infected fluid coming out, which was very awful smelling. One thing I distinctly remember is the joke told by an anesthesiologist. I can't repeat the joke, but he verified with me in the recovery room that he did tell the joke. But his reaction was, maybe you were light in anesthesia. But my question was, if I was light, light in anesthesia, I should have been hurting too. But I was not hurting. And from there, my consciousness traveled to different realms. The first realm it tra uh, traveled to was a very hellish realm. It was pitch dark, there was thunderstorm, there was lightning, and there were very dark entities with crooked teeth running about, and I could hear different souls crying and wailing. Then I was made to lie on a bed of nails, and I was kind of tortured. My first reaction was, why am I here? And I asked them to stop, stop and I asked for anybody who could help me out. And then after I realized why I had been here was because I had been a very mean person, a very unloving person and not caring and getting ahead in life no matter what it took was my way of getting ahead in life. And then my father showed up and he led me from the hellish realm towards a tunnel on where there was a bright light outside. And during the tunnel, uh, traveled through the tunnel, I had review of my present life, which had started in the hellish realm. Then I had the review of my good part of the life too, you know, where I have been helpful to the people. But most amazing was, I had a review of my past lives. And two past lives I remember very well. One was, like I was a poppy farmer in Afghanistan about 1800 years, 18th century or so. And then from the opium sap, I started tasting the opium sap myself and I got addicted to opium. And another life I remember was I was a cruel prince in medieval times. And I was whipping the poor farmers with a whip. 
and that had led to my meanness in this present life and my addiction to, of opium in the Afghanistan led to addiction in my this life and actually I had suffered from a very severe wrist, wrist pain about five years before my ND experience and that time I had a regression done by Dr. Brian Weiss and that time in present life I had gone back to previous life and asked forgiveness from the farmers and they forgave me and my hand got better and I did not understand till my NDE how could one go backwards and ask for forgiveness but during NDE I realized in the other realm the time cannot, is not necessarily linear but past, present and future all fuse together and can exist as parallel universes at the same time. So from the hellish realm I went to the tunnel and from the tunnel on the other side I was greeted by two young robust men. They were full of peace and but full of strength and telepathically they told me they were my guardian angels and they were Raphael and uh, Michael. Now, it was very surprising to me, me being a Hindu, how could the angels showed up? And when I told my wife, my wife's first reaction was, what happened to thousands of Indian gods and goddesses? None of them showed up. <laughs> and from there, I was guided by the angels towards a meadow. The meadow was beautiful, with roses of different colors. A clear water stream was flowing and there was sweet smell to the air and there was a distant chant which sounded like Om or Ang to be correct which I later on found was a primordial form of Om and then as I went higher and higher in the realm the, the consciousness became more formless that's what the angels had told me too that at the highest level the consciousness is totally formless and then I found myself in front of a light the light was like about a thousand suns blazing at the same time, but it was not hurting the eyes. It was, I felt unconditional love, like I talk about, I could see love, I could hear love, I could touch love, I could taste love, and I could smell love. It was love all around. It's very hard to describe it, but the best word I have come to describe it, the word I felt was a Sanskrit word, Shanti, which means cosmic peace, cosmic harmony and bliss and when I was in the presence of the light being the light being talked to me without talking that my life will be spared but when I go back it will be a totally different life I'll have to give up materialism maybe give up my career as an anesthesiologist and be a healer of the soul especially the three conditions I had suffered in my own life depression addiction and chronic pain and to help people with these things, three conditions, which I call disease of the soul. And then I woke up with a jolt in the recovery room. My first reaction was to go down on my knees and thank heaven for the experience I had. But I could not get up. Obviously, I had bandages around me. And after my NDE, I got better within 72 hours that I was ready to be sent home on oral antibiotics. My addiction to the narcotics was gone overnight, but my depression and chronic pain took some time. I was at one time on three antidepressants, but now I'm happy to say I'm on none. And they had to be gradually tapered off, and my pain got better too. But other things happened in my life, like I sold my about 11,000 square foot house without putting it on the, it on the market. Me and my friend just exchanged it. And then I downsized my cars, I used to drive a sports Mercedes and a Hummer. Now I drive a Toyota Camry, a hybrid. So my life literally and figuratively went from Hummer to hybrid. And my nature changed too. For example, what I watch on TV changed. I used to watch all crime shows before, like forensic files, cold cases, but now I hardly watch any TV. But now when I'm watching TV, I'm sitting with my wife and watching food channel or travel channel. So everything in my life, how I react with patients, how I trust the divine change too. Like I saw the movie Secret one time and I had made a vision board of having a house in Malibu, having a Lamborghini. But after my NDE, I started more trusting in divine and having more faith and more universal nature. 
that I took my vision board. It was biodegradable, biodegradable and went to the ocean and just floated it away with a prayer to the God. I really don't know what is good for me. So whatever you think is good for me to happen. So that was my NDE in brief, which changed me and transformed me in multiple ways. Dr. Party, who was the first person that you talked to about your near-death experience and what was their reaction to it? The first person I talked to in the near-death uh, near experience was briefly to the nurse because my family was still not there that I had experienced that I was out of my body and the recovery room nurse, but she was very busy. She, in the beginning, you know, like once the patient comes here, they have to be very doing everything, settling everything. But then my wife came in about 10 minutes later and it was my wife who had talked to her. She was startled in the beginning, but on seeing my reaction that how real I was, then she started believing that something really happened. And as the time went, as the things started happening on their own and my nature changed, she became more believing in it. What was your reaction to the near-death experience immediately upon uh, coming out of anesthesia? My first reaction, as I mentioned, was of uh, awe and dis uh, not disbelief, but gratitude. My first feeling was of gratitude to thank heaven for the experience I had. So this experience made you less materialistic and more spiritual? Oh, exactly. Can't you be both? One can be both. One can be if one is in, in balance. But mine was a runaway materialism. You know, like I built a house more than I could afford. I was uh, keeping up with the Jones. But if it is in balance, one can have both. But it has to be balanced. But mine was other extreme of materialism. So you really got no satisfaction out of it? I got no satisfaction. It was like a emptiness which could not be filled by no matter how many toys I bought. Mm -hmm. So why do you suppose you pursued this materialistic lifestyle? You know, the part of it was like, uh, I came from a very middle class family and uh, I'm a first generation immigrant. And it is very typical of first generation immigrants to kind of to prove themselves and to prove to the society that it was worth living your own country. I was caught in materialism and then all my friends were building bigger and bigger houses. So keep up with my friends. I built a bigger house which was very hard for me to afford. You grew up in India and um, you grew up in uh, Hinduism. Yeah. What was your understanding of Hinduism before you had your near-death experience? Okay, Hinduism is a actually very, it's not one religion as such. Actually, it is different types of Hinduism, there are different parts to Hinduism. What I believed in the Hinduism, what is the Advaita Vedanta, which talks about the ultimate reality is pure Brahman, is pure consciousness. And all this world around us is illusion. And there are different paths to God. And there are... Bhakti, which is known as yoga. Yoga means union with God. Bhakti yoga, karam yoga, gyan yoga, and raj yoga. And like bhakti is very devotional, like devotional yoga. And then karam yoga is through service. And then gyan yoga is through knowledge. And raj yoga is kind of a combination of all, and it is the royal path. That was my basic understanding of Hinduism. Mm -hmm. Now that you've had this near-death experience, how do you understand uh, your experience in the light of what you now understand Hinduism to be? Now I understand the concept of Brahman, that that is the only reality more thoroughly than before. Now I've kind of experienced it and my belief has become more universal, more en encompassing that all Buddhism, Jainism, Christianity and uh, uh, Islam, they all lead to the same path. They all lead to a pure Brahman or pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, during your near-death experience, you became aware that the highest knowledge is ineffable, it, it is formless? Yeah, the consciousness is totally formless, which is very much in line with the Brahman concept of uh, Hinduism. Mm -hmm. There were two paths that could unfold before you. One of them was to be a doctor, mm -hmm. But you also wanted to be a monk. Yeah, 
you know like when I was in my medical school in the beginning part of the medical school I became very spiritual and I became I was trying to find what is life what is the meaning of life why am I here what is the purpose of life so then I started reading of different philosophies and I came across Vedanta philosophy which I'm ta I just briefly mentioned that the, in, the basic nature of the universe is pure consciousness and I started following that and then I said I'll become a monk to really pursue that to reach the ultimate union with God but then the, I left my house to become a monk but when I reached the monastery the head monk the president of the monastery told me exact words Rajiv your time is not now go back finish your medical school your time will come one day and now I feel my time has come so in other words it, it took uh, medical school training mm -hmm. which actually you found I think kind of unhealthy and grueling and dangerous to the patients Mm -hmm. uh, going through that kind of training is, is somewhat similar to the training that a monk goes through and it's discipline. Yeah. But the intention is different. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, later on I wanted to be a, a monk doctor mm -hmm. because the organization I'm talking about, Ramakrishna Foundation, they have about 20 hospitals in India and the people working in the hospitals, most of them are doctors who have become monks. So I wanted to be a monk doctor later on mm -hmm. but my path became different I came to America got in a residency the American dream started becoming my dream and then I got married so the monk and the spirituality part was left behind medical school training um, is reductionistic uh, do you also think it's atheistic your yeah, medical school training is atheistic because we try to find every solution by a neurophysiological chemical reaction like that's how the drugs work and that's what the basic concept of consciousness is as it is a byproduct of electrical and chemical reactions in the brain so you experienced something that was completely counter to that exactly could you talk to us about uh, how do you feel about that? How do you feel that consciousness can uh, be different from brain function? Yeah, you know, like this concept of consciousness being separate from the body was in the sense of being growing up as a Hindu. I kind of believe that because uh, we are born with the concept of rebirth. We are born with the concept of reincarnation. We are born with the concept of our taking our karmas from the previous lives. And so it was not something new. But when I experienced it myself, then I became a very firm believer in it. Before that, I was agnostic regarding this. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it exists before or it does not exist, it did not play a role in my life. Right. If you were brought up as a Hindu, how is it possible that during your near-death experience, you encountered two angels, Raphael and, and Michael. Normally, in a near-death experience, uh, the images of your culture are somehow projected onto the light. Mm -hmm. So how do you account for these two Christian symbols being in your near-death experience? You know, I'm surprised myself. The only way I could explain is that I have been in the West since 1982 and I have spent most of my adult life in US so that culturally I have become a mixture of Indian and American culture mm -hmm. so so if American culture has become a part of me since I came in 82 so that is almost 31 years right, right. Uh, your state of consciousness during this near-death experience um, was not clouded at all if, if you were to take the your anesthesiologist word then your consciousness should have been muddled but you could see you could hear mm -hmm. and you could smell not only could you still retain those senses but they were actually more enhanced is that true uh, they were more enhanced and more acute and the thing is that i was not in pain if i was light in anesthesia i should have been in pain mm -hmm. but i was not light in anesthesia and i could my senses were totally intact. 
and that surprised me in the beginning and that's why my thought was you know maybe he used his different kind of anesthesia on me but he didn't he didn't and there was no reason that use we use anesthesia ketamine is we use on uh, small children to change the dressings during burns that's the indication for it so how is it possible that your consciousness was enhanced i guess it was outside the body and that was the experience of nde because it was pure consciousness and it became enhanced it has no limitations uh -huh. um also during your near death experience i think you met your your father and he uh told you something i think he said keep your consciousness clear yeah be truthful to yourself and the divine will take, take care of you yeah and talk to us a bit about how you saw your father in this near death experience you know like these the words my father's used if you are clear no my father said keep your consciousness clear and and be truthful to your own self the universe and the divine will take care of you these were the exact same words he had used about 20 years ago when he had complications from heart surgery in fresno i had touched his feet and i had said dad i'm going to go to uh, nashville to finish my residency and he was supposed to be transferred to a floor when i reached nashville and i called back how is he doing they told me he uh, coded and arrested and he passed away so i had to fly back but to answer your question my father showed up in his you know like ethereal body he looked much younger and my father was actually in a way in a white clothes and he, it was he loved to wear his uniform you know like he was like air traffic controller you know like almost like pilots you know like things like stripes like this mm -hmm. so it was very f kind of foggy i could not make out exactly but he was wearing white clothes and had a ethereal body mm -hmm. what was time like there time was you know like uh, was not linear like it felt like everything was happening simultaneously i lost the concept of time only time i remember the time was when i came out of it in the recovery room then i looked at the clock and then i saw how much time had passed by mm -hmm. so this experience uh, really overturned your understanding of what reality is oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. as you look back on it is it a shock how how do you feel i feel very transformed i feel that uh, it was something which i i'm thankful to the universe for having that experience uh -huh. it has transformed my life it has bring, given me peace and joy many people who have near death death experiences report that they um have become psychic or have psychic powers or uh, are more sympathetic what's your experience with this okay i have not developed any psychic powers as such but i have become intuitive towards myself you know like if i have to do a certain task i get intuition whether should i go ahead or not should i go there or not and i have become a more sympathetic human being more caring towards my patients and to my family and to people in general mm -hmm. do you find that you may that you pay more attention to uh the present oh yeah i live more in now uh huh yeah Uh, actually i wrote a book the soul of wellness and there i uh, as a part of my uh, gain knowledge i gained from my nde that you know living in now is a very important part of uh, leading a healthy spiritual life mm -hmm. you experienced a, a telepathic knowing with the light um what kind of familiarity did you feel with the light did you feel that this was not something new that it was more of a more of a how can i put it coming home coming home yeah, yeah i felt feel? like coming home i felt like i was part of the light but i was separate from the light it may sound paradoxical but it was both feelings at the same time the best i can explain is that i felt like it was consciousness was a pure ocean and i was a small wave in the ocean you know i'm separate wave is separate from the ocean but still a part of the ocean mm -hmm. that's the feeling i had I'm wondering why would a near death experience uh make people more loving and less materialistic? What happens to you in that experience that causes this to happen? 
You know, the biggest thing I can say is because when one is in the presence of the light being or in presence of the light, all one can feel is our experience is love. And that love is what we, the person who had ND brings back. Because the f feeling is there that the essential nature is love of the pure consciousness. And the love is not just a love between husband and wife but love which is very hard to describe is more to feel is kind of unconditional mm -hmm. how has this experience changed your view of death for example if someone very close to you passed away what would you think and feel you know i would actually i had my sister's son about 21 year old passed away two years ago after a car accident and it was very painful for my sister and it was painful for the whole family. We felt bad because he was physically not here. But at the same time, I tell my sister, he's still in this universe. Maybe he has taken a birth at some, another place. Or maybe you can have, she then found a psychic with who she can help and communicate with her son, ADC, after death communication. Because the spirit lives on. Have you had some experience with that after death communication? I see my father in my dreams now and he guides me from there but uh, I have not had any other form, any other form of ADC. Do you think it's possible for uh, for let's say a medium to uh, communicate with your past relative and and pass on messages to you? I think it's possible. It is very possible. I, and I have been to a medium, and that medium did say some things uh, that he got my father. He said my father is here and did mm -hmm. provide certain details mm -hmm. which he couldn't have found out from the internet or somewhere else right. about my childhood or something like that, yeah. and which only my father knew. But of course, you know, you have to be very careful about what medium you see because so many of them are frauds. I 100% agree with you. Yeah. yeah, actually, I'm reading a book recently uh, I purchased by Dr. Raymond Moody. You know, he's the pioneer and the father sure. of NDE mm -hmm. research in America. He is the one who coined the term, actually, NDE. I'm meeting him next week uh, in Phoenix, and we are presenting at the same place. And he wrote a book, Reunions. Right. And, and there, that's where he talked about, about ADC, after death communication. Mm -hmm. I think he talks about the psychomantium in that book. Uh, yeah. A mirror device where you can... Mirror device, yeah. Right. Actually, I'm learning it from him. Oh, you are? Yeah. <laughs> have you had any luck so far? No, I, I have not started learning it. Oh, I see. It. I see. Yeah, well, Dr. Party, our uh, interview is just about over. And I'm wondering if you have any parting words for the audience watching who may have some concerns about death or the loss of a loved one. From your experience, what do you have to tell them? My, from my experience, I want to first emphasize that the spirit lives on and your near one, dear one are all here and they usually go to a very serene, happy place and one can experience what I experience as transformation with the three words which I call the magic mantra, forgive, love and heal and these three things start with our own self. Forgive your own self, love your own self, and the healing starts, please. Dr. Thank you. Party, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you.